Hi guys, my name is Vineet Vyas and today we will be learning about melt flow index. Suppose you are going to the market to buy plastic polymers for your raw as your raw material for the manufacturing of a product. You will encounter with a, with a word called as melt flow index or melt flow rate. The manufacturer will show you a grade which uh, is written on the uh, plastic bag provided by the manufacturer. This is a typical data sheet which will be given by the manufacturer. Now as this is the data sheet for polypropylene material, here it is mentioned that the melt flow rate for polypropylene is 11 which is tested at 230 degrees Celsius at, and a weight of 2.16 is applied on it. This testing is done according to the ASTM D1238 standard. Now let's understand in brief that what is melt flow index or melt flow rate. Melt flow index is a measurement of how easily a thermoplastic polymer can flow when it is in molten condition when a temperature and a suitable pressure is applied on it. This melt flow index will help us determine the strength, the flowing properties of the material and the manufacturability of the material. Melt flow index contributes to the following factors in our manufacturing. First is quality control, process optimization, material selection and material process selection. Uh, we may come across a confusion that what, hap what will happen if the melt flow index is higher or lower. So uh, if the melt flow index is higher, this denotes that the material is having a lower viscosity. Whereas if the melt flow index is lower, it will denote that the material is having a higher viscosity. Polymers flow easily when they are in molten state in high MFI, uh, more melt flow index whereas polymers will be more resistant to flow when there is a low MFI. High MFI is suitable for applications requiring an easy flow whereas low MFI is suitable for applications needing strength and durability. High MFI is associated with lower molecular weight polymers whereas low MFI is associated with high molecular weight polymers. High MFI is ideal for high speed production whereas low MFI is suitable for slow and controlled processes. High MFI produces flexible products and low MFI is preferred when you want to produce products which are durable and have excellent strength. High MFI requires less energy during production and low MFI uh, may need a high amount of energy when they are being produced. So let's see. Uh, uh, we are testing the polypropylene material in this the grade which is being provided in the uh, data sheet is H110MA and according to the data sheet uh, the ideal value for the MFI of polypropylene should be 11 and this is tested at 230 degrees Celsius and a weight of 2.16 kilogram is applied on it and this is also done according to uh, ASTM D1238 standard. The materials which we will be uh, needing for this test is virgin polypropylene, melt flow index machine and uh, a pair of scissors to cut the extruded part, beakers to contain the extruded part, uh, safety gloves and safety goggles and along with that an electronic balance to weigh the extruded part. This is the construction of the machine and uh, here we can see that uh, this is the power supply button from where you can turn on and off the machine. This is the temperature indicator along with that this is the time controller. This is the barrel this contains a heater which can go up to 250 degrees Celsius of temperature. Uh, this is where the weights are applied this is around 2.16 kg. This is the piston which uh, helps us to uh, push the material downwards. This is the hopper by using which we insert the granules inside the barrel. And uh, a die of around 2.07 mm is inserted in the barrel. Okay guys, now let's shift to the practical part. This is our MFI testing machine. The first step here is that before starting any experiment we have to uh, look at some safety precautions. The first thing which we have to maintain is that whenever this experiment is performed 
the room temperature is to be maintained at 24 degrees celsius and along with that uh, whenever a new material is, is inserted into the barrel uh, one thing is to be noted that the barrel is to be cleaned uh, using this chemical this is xylene this will ensure that the piston and the barrel uh, does not stuck and all the vacuum inside the barrel is uh, removed which will help us uh, achieve maximum efficiency and accuracy in our results so now uh, we will insert 5 to 6 grams of polypropylene uh, with the help of a hopper to ensure that all the granules are perfectly inserted into the banner we use a charging tool and uh, press it uh, in the uh, hole which is provided now that we are okay that all the material is inside uh, we place the piston in the hole provided after placing the piston uh, one thing is to be noted that uh, we have to uh, start our timer once the piston reaches the second mark uh, the mark will be marked on the piston and uh, now we will insert the 2.16 kg of load which was uh, specified in the data sheet once the weight is inserted uh, we have to make sure uh, that our piston is at 90 degree and it is stable this will also help us achieve maximum accuracy in the meantime uh, when our piston reaches the mark uh, the excess material is to be trimmed out using a cutter or a knife now that our piston is uh, our piston is approaching the mark we will uh, start the timer using the time controller provided as uh, our timer has reached 60 second a beep uh, will be coming from the time controller as soon as the as soon as we hear the beep we will cut the excess part using a cutter and the time controller will set to the reset position now uh, this uh, material which is extruded we will keep it on the weighing scale as we can see our weighing scale is having a reading of 1.1 which means that our material is appropriate according to uh, the tds sheet provided in our case uh, we got the weight of the extruded part as 1.1 using the conversion formula 1.1 multiplied by 10 we got the mfi for this polypropylene material as 11 which is the ideal material which was specified in the technical data sheet